Hi, I'm Kristen, and today I'm going to try to make a design wall for my sewing space. So it's going to go here. I'm um, kind of continuing my sewing room makeover, I guess. I've got another video where I showed what a mess this room was before and how I tidied it up with these shelves and little containers and things. Um, but one of the issues that I've always had with this room is the teal walls. They were painted when this was like a living room kind of a situation and now it's my sewing room and in the daytime it looks okay but at night it's really dark so i want more white for one thing and i've also really wanted a design wall so i'm gonna fill this space find some other somewhere else to put this other stuff and it's gonna be about 55 inches uh wide so i guess that's maybe a normal width of some of these design walls some of them are bigger but it's only going to be about a half height because um i've got my sewing chair so i would just butt up against it wouldn't make much sense um so that's what i'm going to try and make and i'm going to use uh all the stuff most of the stuff yeah i already own so i've got some cardboard packaging uh some old batting or leftover batting not, not particularly old um some duct tape and uh, oh, and I did buy one item, which I'm hoping is going to help me hang it. And maybe if it works, this is the first time I've used it. So just you can watch and see how it goes. Maybe I might be able to even switch the design wall out and hang a quilt on it. Maybe we'll see. Um, but anyways, I'm going to make the design wall. If you're not sure what a design wall is, um, it's basically something you put up on the wall uh, where you can stick quilt blocks or quilt units or pieces of a quilt, sometimes a whole quilt top, depending how big your design wall is. Um, and the idea is that you use something uh, like batting or some people use flannel to, so that you don't need to pin it on. So it's like you're just sticking it on. I think the stuff still sometimes falls off, but I've seen people's where it seems to stay up. So that's what I'm trying to achieve. Like I did try one before on the, this other wall over here. Um, but I didn't like attach it to anything. So I just kind of hung a great big piece of batting from the, essentially from the picture rail. Um, but I used fusible batting and that it didn't work basically. Everything just fell off and I had to, I ended up using pins and it was covering the, a radiator anyway. So uh, I abandoned that and this is the new, the new plan. So let's get to it. Okay, so what I need to do is test uh, what I'm going to cover the design wall uh, with. So what's going to hold the quilt blocks. So the one you hear about most often, uh, and I think the ones where you can like buy a design wall uh, or a sheet to use uh, on Amazon is usually made of flannel. So apparently that's really good for sticking and stuff. And when I lived in Canada, yeah, I could get flannel pretty easy, <laughs> but um, I'm in the UK and I'm struggling to find it on eBay or in secondhand shops. I don't know. Um, so I did uh, go on Amazon and bought what I thought was a flannel sheet, uh, but I now see it says flannelette. So I might want to return it. So I'm going to like gently take this off <laughs> so see if, if I can do it without getting rid of it just to try. I'm not going to unfold the whole sheet. I'm just going to try and take this little sleeve thing off. Uh, so I can try it. And the other two things behind me are some cotton batting and some polyester batting. So, right. So we're going to see what's going to hold up our quilt blocks here. So I'm just going to, let me see, move this over a bit. I'm going to put this in the middle maybe. Hopefully I can still fold it up and send it back. Okay. So test number one the polyester. Okay, holding okay. And flannel, now this isn't gonna reach all the way across the block. So we'll see. And then the cotton. Okay, so they're all holding, <laughs> so that's okay. Uh, so I guess I have to decide 
I'm just giving it a tug to see is it gonna fall down or what. So it looks like I could use either one. I guess I just picked exactly the wrong one when I tried to do this before because I used a fusible batting, which is the kind you iron on. Um, it's like to save, make it easier to baste, but I never could quite get the hang of that either. Um, and then when I tried to do this on the wall, everything just fell off so because I didn't iron it on, I guess. So anyway, so it looks like any three of these are going to work. I'm sitting here for a few minutes. They haven't fallen down yet. So I'll see what I have the most of <laughs> um, if I have enough. I don't want to cut up a great big piece of uh, batting off a roll for this. Um, so I'll see what I have left over and if I can just use the batting or if I want to use the batting and the flannelette sheet, which I've also seen some people doing. So I might try that as well. Um, but I'm going to build the design wall and then figure out what I'm going to put on top of it. Okay, so this is what I'm going to use for the sturdy part of the design wall. Um, so it's corrugated cardboard. It's really, really thick. Um, it's left over from a weight loss attempt from last year when I ordered sort of subscription calorie controlled meals that come in these chill boxes and stuff. Very quickly was disgusted with both the food and the amount of packaging. So, <laughs> so that subscription got canceled and now I'm left with the cardboard that I saved from that. So other options, uh, I've seen people use styrofoam. I've seen people buy, like, I think it's called insulation. But I'm not sure what it's called, but it's stuff that builders use when they're insulating or core foam board, something that sounds like that. Anyway, I didn't want to go out and buy something. So I'm going to use these. I've measured the width, the maximum width that it can be in that space over there. And then I'm going to just see if I can make like an even length so that it's yeah so it's a bit of a jigsaw puzzle because they, they all come in these strange shapes some of them bend <laughs> so I'll just see what I can do so I basically made my cardboard into a kind of rectangle shape had to cut a few pieces down to make the last little corner fit and then just duct taped it all together on both sides so just to come back to my tests for a second here time lapse uh it maybe took me 15 minutes to tape that other thing together, the design wall bit together, and then I went and had some lunch. So I'm gonna say this has been up for 40 minutes maybe, and everything's still uh, sticking all right on all three of them. So hopefully that'll <laughs> give you some confidence if you're uh, gonna use any one of these for your own design wall. So in the end, I decided to use um, two bits of polyester batting joined together. And then also the flannelette sheet, because you might be able to see there, but you can kind of see through the batting to the cardboard. So I decided to use them both. Um, so first I sort of pulled the batting really tight and duct taped it to the back, just the edges of it to the back. And then the same with the flannelette sheet. So it's kind of like some sort of rough and ready upholstery kind of a deal. Uh, I use duct tape because um, staples don't work in cardboard, I can tell you from experience. Um, and if you can get someone to help you hold bits, it does make it easier to get it tight. So, so what I'm going to use to attach it is super heavy duty Velcro. It says it can take up to seven kilograms of weight. So we'll see how this works. Okay, so I've got my heavy duty Velcro here. So obviously there's a... Uh, top and a bottom or a male and a female whatever you call them long strips um, so this is the side I want to be the top because it's the side where I got the nicer corners <laughs> so I'm gonna put the bit with yeah I don't know which is which um, if you're au fait with velcro terms but I'm gonna put the less smooth bit on the wall I think and the fuzzy bit on this that's the idea and then if this works the thing is that I might be able to um, uh, buy more, this is all I have right now, but <laughs> buy more and attach this bit to the back of a quilt and then hang that on the wall, you know, switch them out. I don't know if that's going to work, but that's uh, the rough idea. Anyway, so I'm going to try this one first. So I'm going to attach this to here. So spoiler alert, I had to do this twice. Bonus points if you can see what I'm doing wrong here when I'm attaching the Velcro. Um, put it up, worked fine for the evening, and then this is what I arrived to in the morning. 
So basically, I'd put the Velcro on the duct tape, and the duct tape is not strong enough um, to hold it like that. So take two, um, I'm putting the Velcro further down so that it's um, more attached to the cardboard than to the duct tape and the sheeting, which obviously was a mistake. Now you can see the removed Velcro above has made a mark, but do you see the little bits where it didn't? That's where I went slower. So it is possible, I think, to get this duct tape off of the wall without making marks if you're more patient than I am. I knew I was covering that bit up anyway, so I just ripped it off. <laughs> so this is me putting it lower down on the design wall so that it doesn't, because obviously the, all the weight was on that duct tape with the Velcro, so it wasn't gonna hold. So it needs to be on the back of the firmest bit. The other thing, from this exercise that I've decided is that I'm not gonna be swapping it out for quilts because the cardboard is not, um, you know, it's bendy, even though I've duct taped it together. So uh, if I try taking it off and on too many times, I think I'll kind of ruin the sturdiness of the board itself. So that idea is gonna have to be for some other place in the house, but I am loving this Velcro, it's super cool. And I have tried to attach cardboard to walls in other ways in the past. It's just never quite worked that well. So if you don't mind sticking stuff to the wall, um, this heavy duty Velcro has really impressed me actually. So here it is. It's been up for about three days now. It's still holding fine with the Velcro and the blocks are still sticking to the flannelette um, without pins. So I'm pretty pleased. Uh, I'm liking it so much that I'm thinking if I ever, you know, did another big room revamp that I'd be looking for like, where can I find a whole wall so I could make something bigger? Cause I'm definitely liking it. So uh, I'm glad I tried again after my <laughs> failure with the fusible batting on the wall because um, this is definitely working much better. So I'm really pleased I finally have a little design wall. Uh, I'd love to hear how you've made your own if you have and um, what you did differently or how you worked it out. And if you like videos like this, then please do subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, um, leave me a comment and let me know what you thought. Thanks for spending time with me.